But anyway, now we open up to questions. Are the mold toxins acquired from the mold uh, particles and spores themselves, or just mainly from that, or mainly from the VOCs that are produced by them? There have been some nice studies looking at the question of where you know, are the reservoirs of inflammagens and toxins. You know, both Neil and I have mentioned that uh, yeah, it's not just mold alone, we, it's not just mycotoxins alone, but specifically for every molecule of quote inflammagen or toxin that you find on intact spore, you will find essentially 500 that are on fragments of spores. So that measuring spores is about 0.2% of the total burden. Uh, the issue is it's not just Toxic mycotoxins on spores. It's, it's, it's much bigger than that. So, uh, is there any of it in the VOC? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Alan can tell us a little more about uh, VOC uh, effect on an innate immune or acquired immune responses. You know, we see a lot of people doing measurements, but I, I'm not convinced that I've ever seen a physiologic documentation of what a VOC does. We, we think that MVOCs or microbial VOCs are bad. There are papers that say that. I have a hard time sorting out how I can do that clinically. Alan, any of these thoughts on that? So I mean, some, some, somebody else, I mean, it's a wonderful question. And I, I can't think it's, it's very good to be, you know, breathing terpenes all day long, but uh, I can't prove what it did to you either. Can you please repeat the question? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, the question is, is it mold toxins that are hurting people? And then secondly, do MVOC or do, do VOCs have a reservoir to hurt people separate from toxins? Yeah, actually I was asking whether the mold, the effect of the mold toxins uh, are caused by the mold spores and particles, or is it caused by the VOCs produced by them? Okay. Right, I think he's refined the question. Is the illness coming from VOCs or from toxins slash inflammagens? And the answer is, uh, I don't see anybody giving any peer-reviewed ways to measure VOC effects. We've got lots of peer-reviewed ways, and in some of the references I just, just listed uh, may help you understand uh, what, what toxins and inflammagens do. There are lots of people who can't leave their home. There are lots of people who leave their home and they go into another one that's worse. It is it's a nightmare situation to say you've got to vacate. If you can't vacate, then what we've got to do is the very best we can to clear reservoirs for exposure. The treatment protocols are the same, but expectations of benefit are somewhat reduced. Specifically, uh, this is when I tell people to go to Sears or whatever big box store you have around and make a significant investment of 150 bucks uh, in a uh, portable HEPA unit. Uh, if you've got uh, a living room one area, I would have a HEPA uh, running uh, half a day when you're not in the living room, say at nighttime, and another unit in your bedroom when you're not in there uh, during the day. So scrubbing reservoirs is fine. Uh, eliminating reservoirs like getting rid of carpets, getting rid of draperies, uh, HEPA vacuuming walls and ceilings makes a huge difference. Getting rid of any kind of porous material that you can you know, part with emotionally uh, is, is incredibly important. <coughs> we saw uh, with Lori Rossi that even with you know, low levels of uh, hurts me scores. She was so sensitive that it didn't really matter, you know, how, how well she had done. Uh, she basically had to do much more than somebody else. There's a lot of individual variation. So that if you start so exposed, you're not likely to get as much benefit. And then what you can do is try to cut your losses as best you can with filtration and cleaning. Why did you say filtration when you're not? Oh, because it's, it's a noise. That's all. There'd be no reason that you couldn't run 24-7. 
But, you know, if you're going to watch the Texas Rangers beat up in those Cardinals, you know, I don't want so much noise. Neil's screams of anguish are enough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any recommendations for people's clothes? I hear from a lot of people, oh, you know, I went on vacation and it smells musty in my closet. How do I clean my clothes? Because they're all for us. Yeah, and, and the, the issue is that Dr. Strauss has actually looked at that question. Um, he has shown that you cannot clear most of the fabrics used on upholstered furniture, draperies, and all that. Uh, but he has also shown that you can launder clothes and they do just fine. So my recommendation is that unless you're Scarlett O'Hara I'm trying to date Red Butler, don't wear the draperies because you can't clean those. <laughs> but, but otherwise, otherwise you, you can clean your clothes or dry clean them. And that has not been a problem. But having said that, if you start working with, with patients who come in with moldy clothes and you're sensitive, you're going to get a hit. When the Amish come, it's usually five or six of them at one time in, 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 in uh, the small exam room. And you know, the, the blue clothes are the heavy wool stuff will just make you sick. And you can't just tell them to take their shirt off. <laughs>